Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. I've been asked by several people how to get heat for a radiator when it's not working, how to investigate what's going on if the radiator is at fault. In this video, I'm going to show you what to do, how to vent the radiator, how to balance them, how to check where the heat is. So first of all, when you're venting a radiator, make sure it is pointing away from the wall. Have something underneath it. Check the pressure on the boiler before you vent it. Get a container underneath and a cloth to make sure you do not wet the carpet up and so on with radiator water. So this radiator had water in it. Didn't need venting, but it's good to check. And when you do vent them, make sure you top up the system. So here I'm checking the temperature on this radiator before the boiler has come on. And here are the valves. So you've got a lock shield valve on the left and on the right, you have a thermostatic radiator valve. So I've got my analyzer with some temperature sensors on them. So I've clipped on my sensor and I've got 17 Celsius at the moment, 17.6 Celsius on one side of the radiator. So I should be able to identify my flow and return with my temperature sensors, my clip on sensors. So I'm gonna create a demand soon from my room thermostat. Do remember with the radiators to make sure that the valves are fully open. So here we go. We've got the boiler calling for heat and the pump is running. So we have the temperature rising there on the left to 17.8. So it looks as though we have the flow on the left, but you do have to double check by putting temperature sensors on both sides of the radiator. If you don't have temperature sensors, don't worry. You can fill with your hand to find out. So I've got my laser thermometer here and I'm just checking the temperature of the radiator because also with this laser thermometer, you can also see these thermometers can cost five to 10 pounds and you can also use them to identify heat loss in a house or which radiators are getting hotter than others. So now I can see my flow is definitely coming from the left. So in order to regulate radiators, you have to, especially the ones that are getting hot last on the circuit, you have to close all the radiators and find out which ones are getting the heat first when you turn the boiler on. And then you close down the radiators that are closer to the boiler on the run, that is, and you open up the ones that are further away, open them up more on the lock shield valve. So for instance, you close the lock shield valve completely and then you turn them open like one turn for instance one complete revolution so here's the boiler and the temperature is at 50 celsius i've set my boiler to about 51 52 celsius and this is the temperature of the flow on this particular radiator so i'm checking the temperature remember heat rises so if there's sludge in the system the heat at the bottom of the radiator there'll be a significant difference there'll almost be no heat at the bottom of the radiator once the radiators have been given enough time to heat up. But we know heat rises, so the top of the radiator should be more warm. If there's air in the system, the top of the radiator will hardly be warm at all. So here I am taking off the lot the here I am taking off the TRV, the thermostatic radiator valve, and spraying it. Also be careful when you're spraying WD40, not for it to go everywhere. And then I'm freeing up because sometimes these pins get stuck, especially when their valve has been closed. So you have to free them up. This particular one was not stuck. I tend to leave my TRVs just on. I don't turn them down at all. I leave them in the open position. But in the winter, or should I say in the summer when they've been closed, they sometimes get stuck down. So just remember, don't pull them up with like a pliers or anything because I have seen when these have been pulled right out and water goes everywhere. So just push them down and up. And if you do need to pull them up slightly, just be very careful that you don't pull them out completely. So I'm still checking the temperature here. If you do find that the heat is going in the radiator, but it's not coming out per se, then you've got a, a blockage. All you need to do is close one valve on the radiator, the left or right, and it causes problems. The heat needs to flow right through the radiator. So Using temperature sensors, you can get an indication or just your, the back of your hand if the heat is stuck in the radiator. You can isolate both sides of the radiator, the left and the right. And once you're sure that it's isolated, 
you can carefully drain the water out of the radiator into a wet vat, hose, or into a container. Make sure you put down a dust sheet. And then remove the radiator and flush it out like with a garden hose. All right, so I'm checking the flow on my boiler. You should really have about roughly about 10, 11 Celsius on the, from the difference between the flow and the return on a boiler. I've got this boiler turned down really low because I want it to, I want it to reach its dew point and condense. So I have 46 Celsius on the flow and rising ever so slightly. On the return pipe work, I have about 40 Celsius. So I've only got about five Celsius difference between my flow and return. So you can close all the other radiators down if you want to encourage the flow over to this particular radiator. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, bye bye bye.